this is Michaela and Shayna online. online. And today we are excited to interview the amazing director, Michael Matteo Rossi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great. Good. Thank you guys for both having me. We're really excited to interview. And I'm excited to get interviewed by you guys. Are any of your films related to real life experiences? You know, as a writer and director, you take a lot from kind of what you've experienced and all of that. I wouldn't say that all of them have to do exactly with what I've experienced and everything, but at the same time, you are influenced by the experiences that have affected you, both good and bad in life. So definitely, I mean, it's a, the, the films you, you mold to kind of what you know. You write what you know, and you kind of try to make it in the most entertaining and engaging way possible. So, yeah, definitely. What is the inspiration behind all of your films? Whew. Well, I'm, I'm pretty eclectic when it comes to the type of films that I do. I mean, I've done a, done a dark comedy, done a quirky comedy, done, um, done dramas, done suspense, thriller, sci-fis. Um, I'm influenced by certain people, but I just, I need a good, engaging story. I need something that really has the audience completely captivated and something that they're going to want to dissect and watch over again and, um, and really just, uh, just try to figure out. I do a lot of puzzles, I do a lot of films that, you know, upon first viewing they might not understand, but if they watch, they'll see certain signs, you know, um, like, you know, Sixth Sense is the big, biggest example of, you know, you got those twist endings, you got that suspense type feel, and that's the type of films that I, I try to do. What kind of genres do you like to write and direct the most? Dramas. Dramas. Um, I, I think that, you know, on the flip side, comedies are great. They make, they make you, you know, if, if you're in a bad mood, they cheer you up, all that. But my style is I like those, those dramas that really have that sting, that have that bite to them, that have that, that wow factor, um, that really just make it, that you're like, that was a powerful film. I like to do character-driven dramas where you really try to, you know, understand who is this character, what do they want, and just basically what they're going through. You follow a journey, all right, with these characters and you feel like, hey, I can relate to them in some ways and in other ways maybe I can't, but I'm still being very entertained by seeing what this person's doing, what they're going through and all of that. And I think that dramas really bring that to the table. And when it comes to festivals and all that, in my opinion, I think they're the ones that are taken the most seriously. They're the ones that if you make a fantastic drama, it, it'll stand the test of time, and it'll, it'll be watched for years to come, at least hopefully in my case. Yes, hopefully for you. Hopefully for me. I'm sure they will. Oh, thank you. I, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed on that, definitely. What is the budget um, for a short film versus a feature film? Well, there is a huge, huge difference. However, you can have, you know, you can put six, even seven figures into a short with amazing production values, with A-list talent, and, you know, just make it better than any, you know, low production feature film. So it really depends. By, you know, rule of thumb, features, because they're longer, because there's more locations, there's more actors in it, generally are much more expensive than, um, and a higher budget than shorts. But um, you, you can make, conceivably, a, a, uh, a short film with, with like a few hundred dollars and a camera and your friends and just make it there and, but at the same time you could uh, you can make a short with fifty thousand dollars and uh, and A-list talent even more so it really depends but features if we're talking the ones that we usually see in the theaters are usually uh, in the millions if not higher you know hundreds of millions you know it, it can be a lot definitely how many films have you made I have directed eight films, I have written nine films, and I have produced in some aspect ten films. So, oh, thank you. Thank That's like you. a lot. It's a lot. I really try to be prolific. This is what I love to do. I can, I'm happy to say that this year has been very good for me. I hope it continues. Um, and it's really, it is my job. But I don't consider it a job. It's, a, it's, it's my life. Now that might sound cliche, but I, I really, this is all I do. This is all I do now. If I'm not writing, or excuse me, if I'm not on, you know, set, I'm writing. 
if um, you know I just I try to keep busy with it I really do so yeah it's a lot of films and I've been doing it for six years now and how many of your films has made it to film festivals luckily most of them I think that um, that every single one has at least been in one festival um, the the last few films that I've made though luckily have uh, have not only been to a few different festivals and not just in California but in a few other places but they've also won some awards which is really good it's uh, it helps establish you and when you get into one festival you're kind of known as an alumni there so if you send in a, another uh, film they usually accept it unless it's really bad but they say oh okay I know that that director made that great film that was shown in our previous festival let's uh, let's put the new one in um, so it's uh, it's really exciting and film festivals are a fantastic way to to network see other people's work and just showcase your film you know Congratulations on getting most of your films in there. Well, thank you, thank you. And a winning awards. Yeah. Awards are always good. Um, you know, you're you're happy when it gets into a festival, but if it wins an award, especially at a good, reputable festival, it it feels like a million bucks. What kind of awards did you win? Well, I did a uh, sci-fi drama called The Last Wish. It was screened to this day um, at five festivals, and I think it picked up four awards. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty good. And it won best sci-fi short at the um, International Film Quarterly, which was in uh, Beverly Hills. And it won. Yeah, it's it's good. It won this. Um, this award called the Sierra Nevada Award at the Mountain Film Awards, which is in Mammoth Lakes. Um, and it's won just a few others, honorable mention at the LA uh, Film Awards and all of that. So it's good. It was screened at the Riverside International Film Festival, which is, uh, which is pretty good. So, um, yeah. And um, this other film that I did, Pushing Eternity, won Viewer's Choice at a, at a film festival in Van Nuys. So every time you hear about it, it makes you feel good, but it makes you feel good for everybody that worked on it because it's a, it's a collaborative effort. So, um, yeah, it's just to name a few. Congratulations. How do you get, oh, thank you, thank you. How do you get the money to do these films? When I first started out um, at 19, making my first short films a lot of it had to be out of pocket a lot of it had to be kind of calling in favors people who are starting out will sometimes do uh, do certain jobs for free or for deferred pay because they're trying to just get exposure and networking too so um, a lot of it's out of pocket but once you start to really make a name for yourself you can have certain investors come and say hey you know I'll give you so-and-so money for you to make it, especially if they like the script that you're doing. Um, but you can reach out, and then there's certain websites that you can go to that, you know, help promote your film. Hey, we need to raise a certain amount of money to do that. So there are many ways. There's not one right way to raise money or anything like that. But that's, that's just kind of how I do it. If you won the lottery, would you still be making films? Absolutely. I'd probably put in a lot of uh, the money towards making films and stuff. I would self-fund my films. It depend how much I'd make. I mean, if I if I won a lottery on, you know, a hundred million dollars, you know, then I I'd still make it because I I love to do it. Absolutely. If you won like the lottery, like, and you made a like, like a, a boatload of money and uh -huh. you make can a million. so much money that. No matter how much you spend, you keep on still having more. I would absolutely still make films. It would be that would be perfect. I mean, I if if there's no investors that I can find, I would just finance films. I would get A-list talent. I would get whatever we would need. So uh, that would be perfect. But 100%, I would continue to make films. That would be excellent. It's good that you're still gonna want to do what you of love. Of course, of course. How do you get the actors for your films? Well, where I am right now in my career, I, uh, I think I have enough kind of networking capabilities that I can ask people. I have enough kind of actor friends, colleagues, all that. But when I was starting out, we went on sites like Now Casting, LA Casting, Actors Access. You know, you put, you put the sides up, you put a little brief uh, description of the film, and they can uh, audition for you. And we, you find a lot of good talent out there. You really do. So um, that's, that's pretty much how I found 
found them and then if they're awesome you work with them again and if they're not it's okay you know you learn but uh, it's just it's branching out it's it's finding these great people and then you continuously work with some of the same people um, which is the best uh, so that's pretty much how I find them how many actors are, do you continuously work with uh, I guess I'm going to drop his name on here. Um, I work with, with a few people um, that I really respect and um, that I think are fantastic actors. One is Michael Klinger. He has starred in two of the last films that I've done and hopefully will, will continue to. Hey, Mike. Um, another one is uh, another good friend of mine. His name's Chris Petrovsky. Came from New Zealand originally, but very, very talented actor. He uh, starred in one of the, in my first feature film that I, I directed. It's a horror film called Loss of Life. And he also had a role in Pushing Eternity, which is a short film that I did. Um, and, uh, and, you know, a few others, but those are just two. I don't want to name everybody, but when, when you get along, it's not just if they're good actors, you got to get along with them because what people don't realize is that if you're seeing, you know, a two hour film, it's not just that two hours. You are constantly, you have 12 to even more 15 hour days with these people. You have to get along with them and you eventually do. You really grow and, and you, you build good professional relationships but also friendships with these people. So um, definitely like if, if I get along with somebody you, you'll be working on many more films that I've done to come. What's your next project? <laughs> that's uh that's actually funny um i i am trying to do a feature film next a uh, feature film on a decent sized budget um i'm kind of in the really pre pre production of that because earlier this month i just finished the fallen prodigy which is um I guess it can play as a short or a pilot. It's a supernatural drama, so we literally just finished that. Just got done with post. We're gonna. I'm starting to send it to certain film festivals. Hopefully, it premieres somewhere very good. Um, I'm very proud of it. Now we have an exclusive clip for you. Could you give us an introduction before we see it? This little clip kind of highlights. Um, Aiden's frustration. He's in purgatory and he doesn't want to have to do with anybody and this guy Daniel who's kind of his mentor he gets frustrated with so he slams him against the wall and uh, and Daniel just tries to explain look I'm here to help you I'm here to have you save people um, which is what you have to do now so it's, uh, it's kind of intense and it's highlighted on, uh, on the trailer. Let's see this clip now. Roll clip. Say goodbye to her tonight. You know how it is, Aiden. Back off, Daniel! You don't know me! You don't seem to get how this works! I'm supposed to teach you to go after people who are more feasible to save! Wow. That was intense. Everybody, Please go and watch the full trailer on YouTube for The Fallen Prodigy. If I could make a, a feature as my next film um, sometime early next year, that would be fantastic. That would be good. What's it going to be about? <laughs> okay. Um, it was actually a script that I wrote um, back six years ago, pretty much when I was starting out. It's probably gone through 20 different drafts. It's a psychological thriller. Um, that I could see, I, it's, it's like my baby, um, and I could see that being made. And I could also see as a feature, making a feature version of the short film that I did called Pushing Eternity. I talked with a few people and it really could play well as a feature. Good character driven film, it's a kind of edgy drama, it has a lot to do with a guy who kind of you know, uses his powers, a little bit of a supernatural drama, he uses his powers in a self-destructive and negative way. Making a feature of that would be fantastic. Um, it would cost a decent amount of money, um, but I, I could make it happen. That sounds really exciting. Well, thank you, yeah. We should totally check it out. I, I'd, I'd love for that to happen. As soon as I get the funding, trust me, I will, I will hit it very hard and, uh, and make it happen. How can people watch your movies? Well, you can go to my, um, my YouTube channel, or if you just Google my name, just Google my name, I use my full name, Michael Matteo Rossi, 
you will see you know interview clips you'll see my demo reel which is very uh, needs to be updated um, and and you can see a few full films of mine and then a few trailers of mine as well so if you just google Michael Matteo Rossi um, you you will be able to see that I, I have a Twitter I don't use it that much but please follow me if you want um, and you can see my IMDB page has a little description more about me and also my filmography um, everything that I've done starting from back in 07 so uh, yeah it's a good way of doing it so Rossi that sounds Italian are you Italian I am Italian absolutely um, and I use my full name which is very Italian so uh, yeah and I have I, I own a little indie production company called Italian Cowboy Productions long story about how that came about <laughs> don't really want to get into it but um yes yes definitely am. what do you think about the impact of the italian, italian film? cinema <laughs> unfortunately italian cinema now is a little bit uh in decline they they could bring it back but back in the back in the 50s and 40s 50s and 60s they 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 were the top along with kind of french new wave you had those directors um Fellini, Antonioni, um, you know, just to name a few that, that were just fantastic. And then, of course, you had the 70s, which had all the horror films, Dario Argento and all that. I think he's still working, um, but they, they, were, they were fantastic. I mean, some of, the, some of the best films, the highest regarded films, um, you know, are from Italy. Film Eight and a Half, La Dolce Vita, um, you know, all of those type of films are just... Uh, just top notch and then there's some more obscure films that are gems so yeah no definitely proud of uh, Italian cinema European cinema as a whole is very strong and still strong to this day definitely what do you think about the emerging Asian cinema well uh, Asian cinema has has been strong for decades um, actually my favorite film is called The Seven Samurai. It's a Japanese film from the 50s um, that was directed by Kurosawa. And he, he was just a genius. Most people probably know the film Ron that came out in the 80s. But um, no, Asian cinema is very strong now. I'm a big fan of South Korean films and also Japanese films. South Korean films, uh, they really feed into a lot of the stuff that I like. They push the limit a little bit. They have a lot of um, kind of dark, uh, darker psychological horror, psychological thriller, and, and they're just, just fantastic. Um, so I'm a huge fan of them, um, and I think that they're going to continue to make fantastic films. You know, Chinese, Japanese, and South Korean films out of Asian cinema have to be some of the strongest, actually, in the world. Uh, so big fan, big fan. Anybody who really wants to delve into foreign films for a change uh, should should start there. And that in European cinema. Big, big fan. Definitely. Thank you for your interview. Oh, thank you guys, and best of luck to, uh, to both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.